Hey folks, good morning. Looks like everything's working well for us so far. Uh, somebody's on here. I can't see who or tell who, but I can see one viewer. So <laughs> hopefully we'll <laughs> we'll uh, grow a little bit more than that. Feel free to, to say hello if you pop on. So, But good to see you this morning. Um, and who knows, maybe Facebook hasn't sent out the notification that we're live yet. I haven't gotten it. Angela hasn't gotten it, so... Hold on. That's the answer right there. So, in the meantime, I have my large cup of espresso here. Uh, somebody decided to make me a double espresso, which is it was, it fantastic. Was really an accident. <laughs> you should have seen me trying to switch mugs. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's good. Oh, Angela just shared your video. Look at that. All right. Well, today is. Thursday. Angela, I think you're the only viewer. Oh, this is bad news. It is. Today's Thursday, June 29th. I think it's the date. June 29th. Well, Chris Thursday. Chris knew oh, very good. Hey, Chris. What's going on, buddy? Um, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started because it's time to do that. So. Good morning, good morning. Um, let me adjust the screen quickly. There we go. And there we go. Better. <clears throat> All right. Need to start with a couple of jokes. All right. Here's the first one. Uh, how do you tell the sex of an ant? Are you, are you listening to me over there? I am. I had an ant oh. in my arm. Oh. That fact? Well, look at that. How do, you, how do you tell the sex of an ant? Well, if you drop it in the water and it sinks... It's a girl ant. Oh, no. If you drop it in the water and it floats, boy ant. <laughs> but, never mind. Uh, that was a good one. We'll uh. play on words there. All right. <laughs> All right. Marriage tip of the day. Ready? Uh -huh. Always make sure someone in the relationship has good credit. That's why it's called significant other, or sign if I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, last one. Why is it when you put two threes together, it's called 33? If you put two twos together, it's called 22. Oh, no. But when you put two ones together, why isn't it called 21? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one right there. That was pretty funny. I think Aaron would have enjoyed that one. All right. Let's uh, let's jump into our devotional. Where is she? She's awake. I know. I don't know what, what she's doing. Let's do devotional. Um, we've kind of, the last couple of times we've, we've gathered on this, we've talked about Bible study, and I think we're going to continue that theme, uh, ways to, to, to be in the Word. Um when we refer to maybe our, our our time alone where we're having our Bible study or our prayer time, it's often referred to as, as our quiet time. Uh, but I want to just maybe remind you, and this is for me too, but that our, our quiet time doesn't have to be boring, right? As a kid, you know, time out, quiet time, that's, that's really boring stuff. But our quiet time doesn't have to be boring. When something's dynamic... It's energetic. It's it's productive. Uh, it, it it has this kind of force that causes change. Uh, you think of dynamic. We get that word from dynamite, which is dunamis in the Greek, and that means power, uh, power. Uh, but how does this happen? How does how does something that we maybe often refer to as our quiet time, our Bible study time, how does that time become dynamic time? Well, I think three things become dynamic when they become specific. Actually, it's, it's not three things. It'd be, there's four characteristics of this, so, so hold on. But things become dynamic when they become very specific. So for our Bible study times to become dynamic, to become powerful, they need to become specific. So in other words, 
when you read God's word, uh, you need to look for the specific things that God wants us to do now. We need to look for the, the truths that God wants us to apply in our lives today when we read it. Um, and so I want to give you a couple tips on how do we how do we take that quiet time where, uh, let's face it, I've fallen asleep reading the Bible. I, I know others have too. We fall asleep in our prayer time. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's not always there, but we need to look for that stuff that brings power uh, into your life through the Holy Spirit. So when we read our Bible... Uh, with kind of a, a one line at a time. We talked about that just a couple of days ago. Um, uh, we hit that. Uh, we hit that. You know, emphasis on each word. Uh, we make it personal to us. Uh, it helps us become not just a listener, but a doer of the word. It helps us to become that, uh, not just one who hears or listens, but somebody who who does and 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 does the work. Um, so here's here's a way to ap- to make a, a, this. Uh, a good application uh, to how we change it from our just our, our quiet time to a dynamic, powerful study time. Um, a good application sentence, so to make something apply, has four characteristics. So one, this this idea, this sentence, it has to be personal. Uh, you you can't write an application for somebody else. You can't do it. Uh, it's not about what the world needs to do or what your spouse needs to do or what your kids need to do. It's about what you need to do. You hear You follow me? It's about what you, we can't write an application sentence for somebody else. It's about what we need to do. So it's personal. The next application sentence, uh, characteristics of that is it's practical. Um, that our application should be something that we can actually do, right? When we put application for a job, we don't lie on that job application, hopefully. <laughs> but our application since be something we should actually do and something that we are able to make a plan to do. Uh, broad generalities, uh, they won't help us. Uh, in fact, generalities will produce little action and, and, and make us feel helpless. So it's personal, it's practical. Uh, another good applica- characteristic of an application sentence is it's possible. If we can't actually accomplish uh, the, the task at hand, uh, you're likely to get discouraged. Um, if, if your application sentence says that you're going to pray five hours a day, you're not going to do that. It's not practical. But on the other hand, if your application sentence says that you're not going to go a day without prayer, that's practical. That's something that you can realistically accomplish. So it's personal, it's practical, it's possible. And the last part, the last characteristic of that is it's provable. So in other words, we set a diet, we can set a deadline. We can set a, an end date, a, a, uh, uh, a prize, what you will, uh, for accomplishing that goal. If you don't set a specific goal with a deadline, then all it is is a dream. Dreams are good. Don't don't get me on that. Dreams are great. But we have to set a specific goal with a deadline. Now here's the thing. You can take any passage of scripture and you can make an application sentence about that passage of scripture. You can. So the one we used last week, uh, or actually the one we used Tuesday, I'm going to put up on the screen. James 1, 22. And this is how it reads. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. So, here's what I want to challenge you to do. If you have the ability, and maybe you have a piece of paper next to you or a pencil, or you can get that, or you can rewatch this and do it later. But take that passage of scripture. Don't just listen to God's word. Do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Write that down at the top of your of your piece of paper. And then, just below it, write down these four words. Personal, practical, possible, and provable. Now, I want you to put together an application plan in one sentence with using that passage of scripture. Don't just listen to God's word. 
do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourself. And put together a, a, an application sentence for yourself that makes it personal, practical, possible, and provable. So in other words, uh, today, I'll, I'll just do one for me. We'll just try to make it up right now. How about that? Today, after I read scripture, I'm going to memorize one phrase that I can think about, that I can chew on, that I can dwell on. Maybe it's only four words, but that I can chew on that and then apply it to my life. Make it personal, practical, possible, provable. And you can do that for today, right? Now, here's the thing. This is, this is for you. This is for nobody else to see. Nobody else has to see it. So if you're like, I don't know, my, my grammar's not good, I do, uh, I don't care, that's fine. Make your chicken notes and your chicken scratches, right? Chicken notes, what is that? Chicken scratches. Um, so don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you're only fooling yourselves. How do you take that sentence, write your own with those thoughts, and make it personal, practical, possible, and provable to you? This is how we take scripture and we begin to apply it to our lives and how we live we make it personal we put ourselves in his story that's all i got for you today it's it's it's, it's, it's a it's a broader complex thing than, than maybe you're used to doing uh, but bible study needs to dig deep bible study is not just surface level we got to dig in and so i want to challenge you maybe you're not yeah, Pastor, I can't read, you know, 12 chapters a day. I can't do it. That's, you don't have to. Read two verses. That's it. And then begin to apply yourself to that. Uh, dwell on it. Chew on it. Think on it. Emphasize one word at a time as you read through that. And then write down, how, how does this apply to my life? What's the application sentence? Is it personal? Is it practical? Is it possible? And is it provable? Apply it to yourself and that's when we'll get deep into Bible study well that's all I got for you today hope you're off to a good start uh, Thursday the 29th that means the next time we meet will be in July isn't that crazy half the year is gone uh, I want you to be praying for our students as they finish preparing to go to NYC uh, some uh, uh, other districts may already be getting to travel um, uh, headed to um, headed to Tampa. Um, our students will be going on Monday, July the third, and uh, the conference runs Wednesday to Sunday. So uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing how God uh, pours out His Spirit on them uh, in that place. Uh, this Saturday is a homeless feeding. If you're involved in that, come on out. We'll see you at the church, and then uh, head out to the side if, if that's one of you. Um, and then Sunday we'll gather back together again for worship, and we're very very excited. Um, if you uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, Miss Judy sent an email out about needs for NYC. Um, I'll try to do a quick copy and paste of that on Facebook. Uh, that way you can see uh, if you're able to and you want to grab some items to help the kids at NYC. Uh, little travel size soaps, body wash, uh, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, things like that, deodorant, um, and uh, yeah. So lots of stuff going on. Find a way to get involved. Uh, appreciate you so much. And we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. All right, guys. Hey, remember, as he's a blessing to you, make sure that you find an opportunity today to bless someone else. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.